Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are going to be continuing to build the body wiring loom for the Alfa Rari. Alright guys, welcome back. Those watching last week will have seen that I started laying out my wiring and uh, I am still not finished. It's still quite a big job, but um, I think most of you seem to enjoy it. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and um, think about subscribing if you haven't. It definitely does help us out. Uh, as you can see here, I've laid out my wiring and I've been going through and doing one circuit at a time. Basically, I'm just going to be continuing on filling in the rest of the circuits. Uh, most of the circuits on this I've done so far are the easy ones, like the uh, the, the tail lights and headlights and uh, sort of the, 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 the basic circuits. What starts getting a bit more complicated is starting to put in things like the, uh, the wipers are a bit more complicated and um, uh, yeah, other bits and pieces, getting, getting the, uh, the, the power and working out, okay, what needs to be powered after the ignition's on, what's powered before the ignition's on. So for example, the, uh, the horn and the central locking need to be powered all the time, whereas uh, a lot of the other things need power uh, only once the car's started, although like the stereo needs a power going to it um, that's up from the ignition, and but also one uh, permanent full time. So some of these things that need to be thought out beforehand and laid out and uh, yeah, so let's get into it, let's keep wiring. Alright, so I have to make a, uh, a splice right here into my parking signal. So uh, I thought I'd run you through how I like to do a splice. So I like to use these, which are uh, race work splices. I really like these things. I think they're uh, um, a nice, neat splice. So the way I do it is trim off the splice, get my cables to the length that I want. They're already terminated, so trim them off. One, two, and I twist them together. So they're nice and solid there. And then I get my other end ready as well. And give that a bit of a twist as well. Then I prepare my splice. Prepare my splice in my pliers like that. Place in one end and then the other on the opposite side and crimp. And you see that there, how it crimps it over and makes a nice strong splice. And uh, I should have actually put some heat shrink tube onto this before I did it, but uh, I can slide that on afterwards and uh, because I can run it from the end of the cables and, uh, and then heat shrink over the top and we're good. All right, so uh, now I've been trying to get my head around how I'm gonna wire up my heater, my aircon, uh, and fan, and all the rest of it all together, and how those controls are gonna look, because obviously I've got two separate fan blowers in the car. I don't really wanna have two separate, like, uh, sort of fan switches, if you like. Um, so the way I'm thinking I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna actually have, like, a, um, a heater switch, which will actually turn on the fan for the heater and switch basically between the blower for the just fresh air or air conditioning, which will be this uh, larger unit, or switch over to the heater. So when you flick that heater switch, it will um, turn the, the heater fan over. I could possibly even do it on the lever for the, the heater valve itself. 
so that when you flick that switch, it actually switches between these two and it'll end up using the same uh, toggle switch for the one, two, three speeds of the fan. And I've already tested out this toggle switch, being able to wire it into the heater fans. It will work as, you know, off one, two, three as well. So I think I'll, oh, that's the way I'll set it up. So if you turn the heater on, then it will run this fan. If you turn the heater off, it will run the uh, air con and just blow fresh air into the cabin. Um, I have my, as I said, the uh, 12 volt air conditioning compressor. This is the damaged one. They've actually sent me another uh, undamaged one, but I can use this one for mock-up. Uh, and uh, I will, basically set it up so yeah we just went to turn the air conditioning on it will go back and with a relay in the back it will switch this on and it'll switch on the fans on the uh condensers as well so it'll all be done in the back half so i'm getting my head around it now it's it's getting more complicated there are more and more wires getting added to the table all the time but uh it's it's really good getting my head around all these systems, where the wires are all gonna go to, as, as in where all the switches are, and how everything's laid out in the car, how it's gonna be usable. I'm getting there. Let's keep, <laughs> let's keep going. Holy moly, that was a whole lot of work getting this all to this stage, where basically, I'm pretty sure I've gone through my list of every single electrical component in the car from the starter motor to the interior lights to the dash to everything. Besides the engine and the ECU, which is separate, although there is power going to the ECU and things like uh, sort of the speed signal from the speedo, which will come through this loom, is going to the ECU as well. So I have thought about some of those bits and pieces. Um, and it's all wired up. There is a whole bunch of wires here um, and that said this is only one part of the loom I haven't added any of the grounds yet so that's my next thing to do through and make sure that every single circuit has a ground now I'm not going to terminate any of these looms so this will all be terminated in the car meaning terminating for those who don't understand the terminology is just um, is putting a, uh, a clip or a fitting on the end of it uh, so that it can plug into whatever it's going to plug into, whether it's another plug or whether it uh, plugs directly into component, whatever it is, that will be done when it's in the car. Now I just need to lay it all out and get the shape right and get all the bits where they need to go. And it's a huge mess. So now I'm going to go through one step at a time and add in all the grounds so that we can... Um, Make sure everything is uh, set up the way it needs to be, and whew, then maybe we can start thinking about wrapping it. As a note, uh, a couple of people did uh, mention, and uh, I have actually done it, is uh, I put a couple of spare wires in there as well. Um, only really going between the main sort of core sections through the center of the loom. So there's sort of a couple of spares that go from basically the sort of the, um, the, the fuse box relay area through to um, the center console, which is where all the switches are, and then from the center console also back, and there's gonna be a rear relay box now I've um, discovered as well to run the fuel pump and the air conditioner and things like that. So, um, all right, now it's time to start laying in all the black stuff. I don't need to label it because black is ground everywhere on this car. I am thinking ahead. Red is power, black is ground. That was a whole lot of work, but we are done. I am, I've gone through my list. I've written a list down here of every single component that's in the car, uh, what I've uh, done to wire it all up, where it all goes, what it's all, yeah, it, it's all wired up and it's taken a lot of thinking about where I'm gonna place the switches for everything because obviously not everything in this car is factory. It has a lot of things that aren't factory. So how's it gonna be switched? Where's the switch gonna come from? Uh, I do know now that I'm gonna need a, uh, a rear relay box like I mentioned earlier. Um, that'll be to run things like the air conditioning compressor, the uh, condenser fans, the fuel pump relay, all that sort of stuff. It makes more sense to run it from there rather than like, for example, the fuel pump relay. It's not worth sending power from the front of the car all the way down to the back of the car to run the fuel pump when I can run the 
and the batteries down the back anyway, I can have the power connected down the back and just have a switch coming from the ECU at the front. So things like that, just thinking about where everything is laid out and how to uh, connect everything together so that it works. And as I said, this looks like a massive mess and it, and it uh, yeah, you'd be forgiven to think that, but it actually all makes sense. And I'm understanding how the whole car works so much better now after stopping and going through each and every single component, how it gets, not just how it gets power to it, but how it gets switched on, where the power comes to, to the switch, and then to, from the switch to the unit. And yeah, it's, it's a complicated system. But anyway, that said, it is time to start looming this stuff up and, uh, and actually making it a little bit tidier, which is uh, going to be the next challenge. All right, well, now it's time to start covering up this loom and uh, and making it a little bit more palatable to put in the car. Because at the moment, it just looks like an absolute nightmare. Um, so the what I'm gonna use for that is, uh, I've got a range of these expandable sleeves uh, from Raceworks, which uh, I really like. It's, it's relatively, uh, easy to use and these things these things are really good. So it's like a Chinese finger trap You just sort of squish it together and it, and it goes from being narrow to quite big and uh, That will be this one for example We'll be able to cover the middle of the loom in the big areas and uh, I've got a range of different sizes right down to sort of that little three mil here all the way up to uh, What's this eight sixteen mil? 16 to 8 mil, whatever, yeah. So plenty of sizes to cover the different ranges. And then I'm also using um, this stuff, which is the Tessa cloth tape. Um, so as opposed to um, the regular electrical tape, this stuff is, is much nicer to use. Um, the loom sort of slides nicely with this stuff. And yeah, so a combination of these and a few different types of heat shrink. I've just got basic heat shrinks. I'm not sealing this loom. Um, I said it's not being built to mo motorsport standards. This is just more of a, a nice, neat, regular loom that should do the job quite nicely. So let's go round now. And the way I'm gonna tackle is I'm gonna start doing the extremities first. So all of the, the little runs, cover them up and then work my way in to the biggest runs because trying to, for example, trying to put every single little wire through this sleeving to get to the middle is gonna be very hard. But once I've got sort of the, the smallest ones collected and then gradually get bigger, it will, uh, it will be a much easier process. So uh, it's time to start putting some sleeves on. My back is aching from uh, standing up, just bending over this table for a couple of days straight now. Uh, but we actually have a completed body loom for the car. Uh, it's all completely wrapped up. It's uh, ready to go in. I am well and truly exhausted, so I think that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. You know I can't just leave it like that. We need to make sure it actually fits, so let's fit it back in the car. And it all fits. 
So we have, um, I've still got to put some clips to hold everything in, but we have our uh, main harness going through the center with all the wires going up to the switches that'll be in the middle of the car. Traveling through, going up through to the back. If we come around, if we come around into the back, it comes through, feeds up around, goes to uh, all the lights. There's plenty of, plenty of wire there to get to all of the lights. There's uh, wires here for uh, other bits and pieces. Everything will reach where it needs to reach. That wire there is gonna go to the rear relay box, which I've yet to mount. You can see here over here on the driver's side, there is a lot of stuff to terminate, but it's all gonna fit, all gonna reach. I haven't put this wire into the door, but it's plenty of wire there to get through this side into the door because uh, it's got the clip on it. I have to de-pin the clip to get it through the hole. And the front comes all the way through. You can sort of see underneath here, all the way through to the headlights on either side. So headlights, indicators, all that sort of stuff. Plenty of room for uh, wiring it all up to uh, a plug in here. So exactly what I was looking for. Oh, one thing I did miss is, uh, I was also gonna mention is I have only got two uh, earthing locations in the entire car. So instead of running earths to every headlight, every indicator, sometimes they have like all these earth points all around the car, which are really complicated. If you have um, uh, wiring problems, there can be issues often from those points. So I'm gonna have one at the front, basically uh, um, where the ECU and everything is, there'll be, a, there'll be an earthing um, uh, lug there and one at the back at the battery. So there's only two, all the wires, everything is all grounded back to those points. So uh, there shouldn't be any issues. But uh, I have a loom that fits and it's in the car and it's working, it's perfect. So uh, now it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 9061, so Formula One regulations change from the 2.5 litre to the 1.5 litre engine. And in response to this, Ferrari produced the 156 F1. It was affectionately dubbed the shark nose due to its air intake nostrils. These were designed by Carlo Schitti and it was a design feature that Ferrari would not use again for over 40 years. Not until it came up with the F430. Ferrari started the 1961 season with a 65 degree V6. However, it was soon replaced by a 120 degree version, also designed by Carlo Schitti. A 120 degree V6 was much smoother, as it would have a power stroke every 120 degrees of crank rotation. In 1962, Phil Hill raced a newer version of the car with a six speed transmission mounted in front of the engine. 1963 saw the car modified again, losing the shark nose nostrils for a more conventional intake with the 156 Aero. The 156 overall led Ferrari to winning seven Grand Prix, the 1961 and 1964 Constructors Championship and the 1961 Driving Championship with Phil Hill. All right, that was a big job that has been hanging over my head for quite a while and I am really happy that it works and it fits. It, it's in the car mm. and uh, yeah, that's getting my head around all of this. Wiring is becoming much less of a mystery. The more I do it, the more uh, it's actually making sense. I've, I've wired two engines now. This is gonna be, uh, obviously I've gotta go through and wire the Ferrari engine now into uh, to another Link ECU. I've already done the Rockster and I've done uh, Harry and I'm getting my head around that as well. It was always this really, really daunting task doing wiring and now it's actually, uh, it's beginning to make sense. This, this thick skull is actually <laughs> soaking some of it in. So, mm. yeah. yeah. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy watching Jeff learn and do things on his car. And uh, if you want to see the videos a day early, follow him on Patreon. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, sorry, I've got hay fever and it seems to really be affecting my brain. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> 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 Oof, try not to sneeze. So, follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well, all homeboy by Jeff. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> see you guys. I'm not sure you said it soon, I mean, it could be Kitty. Pronounce it however you want. Nobody's going to know. Shy tie. Shy tie. Or sheety. <laughs> With a six speed transition mounted in. Transmission. Not oh. a transition. Well, I, I said transmission. You said transition. Oh. The newer version of the car with a six speed transmission engine mounted in front of the crank. <laughs> what? I don't know. I just don't wear it to this point. <laughs> what was that? I just thought I'd push on through and just look confident. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs>